great to be here. Um, I'm Jesse Holstein. This is Matt Dane. And uh, yeah, we're all teaching up at Greenwood Music Camp over in Cummington right now. And I am a local. Uh, I grew up in Amherst. In fact, Paul was just saying that he's just started taking violin lessons. My first violin teacher is here. I didn't know she was going to be here. And, uh, and also my eye doctor from when I was <laughs> is also here. Uh, but, and I remember actually being in Waitley when I was six. I went to something called the Waitley Day Camp. And I remember riding horses around and doing other things. So it's, it's nice to be back. Uh, so we're going to play, we're going to start off with a piece by a man named Bohuslav Martinu. And his dates are 1890 to 1959, and I think we all know one of those people that is interested in just such a vast array of things. So one week they're talking about fire ants from Borneo, and then the next week, like, oh, I was watching the tennis and the way the arms work, and just always has the mind thinking. Well, the musical equivalent, that's Martinu. And uh, so they're called madrigals, and yes, we're talking Elizabethan, Madrigals. Now, what you're going to hear, it won't sound very much like the Elizabethan madrigals, but uh, what it does have in common with them, and I'll, uh, um, he was playing in the Czech Philharmonic in uh, the early 1920s, and an English group called the English Singers came to Prague. He went to the concert, and then for the rest of his life, he was just enchanted by that music, and he wrote many sets of pieces called madrigals. And uh, these madrigals uh, for violin and viola were writ written for a couple, uh, well, not a couple, a brother and sister, uh, Lily and Joseph Fuchs. Uh, he heard them playing the Mozart uh, duels. And they were composed not too far from here over in Lenox. He was at Tanglewood teaching. He had, unfortunately, a fall where he fell out of a balcony and broke his, well, uh, fractured his skull. And it was while he was convalescing that he wrote these. And so three facets of the Elizabethan madrigal that you can listen for. One is homophony, meaning we'll play something uh, that's the same rhythm and we're going parallel but at different pitches. So um, you'll hear that actually right at the beginning. Another thing is imitation. Um, and if I had been more technically savvy, I could have played for you this Elizabethan madrigal Fair Phyllis by John Farmer and we're convinced that he heard it because it's just in the madrigal, it's passed back and forth, and you'll hear that all over this madrigal. The last is irregular phrase length. So this is written in a neoclassic style, meaning you know, uh, the, the sounds and the sonorities of Haydn, Mozart, Beethoven, but the phrase structures are based around the text, like a, like a madrigal. So the music was created around the, the text. Well, there's no text to this, but the phrase lengths are very irregular. So those are three things that you'll hear um, in this uh, three-movement work. Another thing to, to listen for in the second movement, you'll see us put these things on, uh, these mutes, and these are these special wooden mutes. And uh, I'm convinced that he probably was aware of the Bartok string quartets and the music of Bartok being in, in America. Bartok was... Um, had just died in 1945. This was written in 1946. Uh, so sounds of night. So hearing that, the tweeting of the birds or insects, or just the sounds of uh, off in the distance, uh, maybe in an Eastern European village. Uh, Martinu was Czech. And uh, one last thing I'll say about this piece. Uh, we both studied with a man named Philip Nagley. Um, in uh, Northampton, and that went to Amherst College, and I grew up in Amherst. And Mr. Nigley, um, I just can never call him Philip, uh, uh, said that he went, he did his PhD at Princeton in musicology, and uh, one day he was walking around the campus, and a very sullen but very tall looking man wearing a raincoat and a fishing hat was walking around, sort of something on his mind, and it was Martinu. Martin, who taught there um, for just a couple of years, but uh, so but that was kind of an interesting uh, cross section there. So we'll play these three madrigals for you. Again, they're about 15 minutes long. <coughs> Thank you. 
So, um, my name is Matt, and um, again, I'm also very glad to be here. It's such a beautiful place, you know, and this is such a gorgeous church. So thanks, Paul, for having us. Um, and I want to tell you a little bit about the next piece that we're going to play before the mission. This is uh, the most substantial piece, uh, time-wise, that, we'll, that, that we'll be playing tonight. Quintet by Friedrich Kulau. Kulau is a name that, uh, if you know his name, my bet is that you either grew up playing the flute or the piano. He wrote lots of, lots of flute music and also introductory piano sonatinas that are in lots of method books. Uh, he, in, a, in his lifetime, he was a very well-known pianist, uh, lived in Copenhagen, and one of his um, nicknames these days is uh, he was the Danish Beethoven. I think that mainly has to do with his time period. He, he, he actually did love the music of Beethoven. He was a great admirer, and he was known uh, in Copenhagen, he brought the music of Beethoven, he welcomed it, or he introduced it to the audiences there. He was also, he was about still only 16 years younger than, than Beethoven, and they did actually meet at one point, uh, near the end of Beethoven's life. Um, in addition to being a pianist, he was known, and a, and a, and a flute composer, he wrote operas. And so, um, at the time, we, we don't hear Kula operas anymore, but uh, in Copenhagen, he was, he was quite, the, quite the writer for the opera house. Um, I think what you'll hear in this piece is a lot more opera than Beethoven, personally. Uh, I, think, I think you'll hear a lot of Mozart influence. And you might notice also, this is, this is just a, uh, we have flute, violin, two violas, and cello. Um, it's a pretty unusual arrangement for a classical piece. Uh, in fact, I don't know of any other composer that wrote for this particular instrumentation. Um, what that make, makes the most sense to me is that it's very much like a, a genre that Mozart was well associated with, which was a viola quintet. Um, that was basically just a string quartet, two violins, viola cello, plus an extra viola. So in this case, he just swapped a, an instrument that he loved, the you know, flute for, for the first violin. And I think you'll hear that uh, through the piece, both both the opera and the, the uh, it's a very chamber-oriented flute part. So. It's in four movements, um, a very uh, graceful first movement. A, if there was one movement that would be Beethovenian, probably would be the second movement. The, the minuet is quite quirky and um, full of surprises dynamically. In art, art, in, um, the slow movement is uh, really gorgeous. We, we love playing it. I think that's the one that sounds most like Mozart. The final movement is a quite a fun little um, chirpy Rondo. Rondo. Chirpy Rondo. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it. Uh, again, Frederick Kulau, this is his quintet number one in D major. <laughs>
Thank you.
Smith College and locals in this area, and we both teach at Greenwood, of course. And the second half is going to have three pieces in it. Uh, the first piece that we're going to play is by Villa Lobosch, and I'll tell you about that in a moment. And then we're playing a piece by Gina Stera, so that's a, a South American contingent. And then we'll finish up by a piece by Vivaldi. And they're all fairly short. And um, we're playing two pieces by Villa Lobosch, who is a Brazilian composer. They're entitled to Choros, C-H-O-R-O-S. And he's written, kind of like Martin, who wrote a lot of madrigals, he wrote a lot of these Choros. And Choros is Portuguese, translates roughly for weeping or crying, and um, is influenced very much by Brazilian street music. This piece was written around 1928, and I guess there was a lot of Brazilian street music around. Maybe the weeping is that it's now disappeared. I'm not sure, but uh, Villa Lobos was uh, a guy who was completely steeped in Brazilian folk music. He spent several years living with indigenous tribes, uh, collecting and recording folk music. And these choruses are um, for a variety of different instruments. This is the only one for violin and cello. There are some that are quite big for full orchestra and one even for orchestra and choir. And he wrote them throughout his life, along with other pieces called Bacchianus Brasilieris, which he's very famous for, uh, which is Brazilian Bach. Um, anyway, the, the nature of um, street music is that it is very kind of primal and somewhat discordant and also very contrapuntal. And you'll see that he asks us to do some rather strange, interesting things in this piece. <laughs> and uh, primal is a good, good word for it. Um, Villa Lobos actually wrote over 2,000 pieces of music. It's amazing, and we don't really hear that much about it. 16 string quartets and all kinds of stuff. So he's uh, not all that well known, apart from the Bacchianus Brasilieris. But we hope you enjoy this. They're quite short, so you don't have to tolerate the dissonance for too long. <laughs> Thank you. 
So as Paul said, we are the Greenwood Chamber Players, and I think you've met everyone except for me. <laughs> um, my name is Christina Jennings, and um, uh, both Matt and I are, live in Boulder, Colorado. Um, but we're all out here from various locations to teach at this amazing Chamber Music Festival that's right down the road, kind of hidden, as you guys are in Cummington. And it's a um, really special place. I, I recognize several um, Greenwood people here in, in the audience tonight. And it's a five-week Chamber Music Festival for high school students. And in fact, it's a, a music camp that Jesse and Matt and I all went to at various times. Um, in fact, this is my 30 years ago, I met Greenwood for the first time. And I've been coming back not every year, but many of those years. And now Matt and I come back with our, with our children and make it an uh, annual summer ritual. So um, that's sort of what brings us here, and it's just a delight to get to play chamber music for you all in this, in this really special place, so thank you for being here. Uh, we do have two more pieces for you, um, from, from Brazil to Argentina, the um, Argentinian uh, composer Gina Stera, and these are three short um, postcards, if you will. The first is called Quena, which is the Andean flute. And the second is a song, and the last is a dance. <laughs>
Capaldi, and this is one of my favorite pieces, a good, good way to end. Goldfinch Concerto, last two movements. Thank you. 